common in what I do, I just realized I hate my job. <laughs> and, and even though I'd been there like for, you know, double figures, uh, it just sort of made me realize that actually, yeah, I, I don't actually enjoy working here. Why am I doing it? And you, could you just get into that pattern of following what you're expected to do and, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah oh what's your next step in your career is as big as the question gets asked you don't actually think about doing something different so that was the trigger for me to say you know I I need to move but then it took me a few years to work out what I was going to move to and um, fortunately around that sort of time I I was working for the large accountancy firms just you know KPMG and again, through with 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 in this conversation, I've not nothing against the firm or anybody I work with. It's it's just I was in the wrong place doing the wrong thing, really. And um, but yeah, it took me a while to work out what I did want to do. And and um, I got this uh, role where I was actually helping um, had a, a people management leader, it's called. So essentially, a kind of anybody in the office had an issue that wasn't on their particular job, then I was a the person they came to, and it could be a we were dealing with the payrolls and the appraisals and that kind of thing, but also day-to-day issues and personal issues and things that were cropping up and you know I get sort of collared by someone and taken into a room and uh, can we have a quick chat and all that kind of stuff um and I actually really enjoyed that I was actually sitting with somebody working out sorting out a problem them there and then or over a period of time and you can see the transformation and the shift of the change and that's got me interested in the personal development and coaching and, and that kind of thing so again got a little bit more uh, clarity uh, about what I wanted to do and and ultimately just I explored sort of internal stuff which never went anywhere and it just got to that stage of I don't want to be here anymore I know I've got the skills and ability to go out and do it I'm just going to do it and I think to answer the sort of the second part of that question even though my mindset now is completely different to what it was then because I've done a lot of work on myself since since leaving we're talking 13 years ago um I would never have made that jump, I don't think, had I had children. Mm. The fact that um, it was just me and my wife and she was continuing to work when I left. But, but I could get it to the point there's not really any risk. It's between the two of us. We're both OK with it. No one's relying on me. I can make that decision. Uh, subsequently, my wife's now left her corporate job and she's doing her own thing as well. She's actually an actor and a voice artist and doing something completely different. She was an accountant by background as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fun household. Um, but the fact that both of us are working for ourselves now, I think only could have happened uh, because we didn't have those ties and constraints. Yeah. Yeah, I imagine that would make the transition so much easier. Yeah. And and it wasn't something that I thought about at the time. It wasn't a case of, well, what shall I do? Ah, oh, I don't have kids. I can do that. Um, because you're just not aware of it. It's just I, that's the journey I followed. It was just where we were. Uh, and I think it, but just thinking about it, had I been in that other state, I just think, yeah, the risks would have been because I was quite nervous about doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. Walking away from a large paid, secure uh, job, it was I actually worked in the area of uh, insolvency, which is where it's slightly different in the UK than it is in America. Uh, but basically, my job was when companies went bust, um, I would take control of that company, literally be in the offices running that business with a view of trading it, making it profitable again and selling it, hopefully. And this is back in the when the recession was going on in sort of well, 2010, I left. So we're at a point where my industry is going great guns, <laughs> really busy. That's the time to jump out and start your own business. Uh, ah. Not. <laughs> so the risk uh, things are just flying around. So had I had extra things, it probably would have never happened. Certainly not at that point. Yeah, I can definitely see how having those added responsibilities would make that a decision like that much harder and take a Mm. lot longer to get towards. Yeah. It's doable. I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened or wouldn't have been impossible, but thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So can you share some of the key values and principles that drive your business and your legacy building efforts, especially after that realization that your values didn't align with that company? Yeah, and it's taken me a while to, I've gone through several journeys and iterations of who I am and it just j- jumped straight into what business enjoyment is. I actually started off working with um, business owners who were uh, going through the challenges of, of losing a business and, and, and a failing uh, business and the financial stress and helping them deal with the emotional stress that goes with that. Mm. And um, 
what over time what i realized was that okay so these guys have uh, are going through all these challenges you can understand why they're feeling pretty stressed and not in a great place but then i'd meet people who are doing they're doing okay i'd go networking they, they had a business it was all right i meet some people who are doing really really well and no one seemed really happy mm -hmm. um and and to me it's just like hang on a sec if you're running your own business okay, we know we want to make some money about it. I know money's there and it needs to be worried about it, but I know what happens when you lose it all, but <laughs> it hurts. But running your own business, you should enjoy what you do. You shouldn't be stressing yourself out. And that's where the concept of business enjoyment comes from. And so the, the, the prime thing is, one is that, yes, money's important, but it's not the most important factor. Enjoyment is what we want to be getting out of it. But what does enjoyment actually mean? Um but it, and ultimately it comes from, and I kind of alluded to it earlier on, but these we, we all go through life sort of weighed down by various traps and chains, uh, which sort of put us into a life of struggle and discomfort at varying levels, um, uh, which are essentially self-created or, you know, our, our society, our parents and, and peers, all the sort of stuff that, uh, that come up. Um, and... I think you, know, you, you might have seen the TEDx talk I did, but I make reference to a quote for a survey that was done in this country by one of the national banks. And essentially the majority of small business owners say that their business has a negative impact on their mental health. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just like, think about that for a second. It's like, it's your business. <laughs> you totally okay, it should be making you miserable. Doing. <laughs> now i know there are challenges and there are issues and things to to defy it but if something's not right change it and that's the thing so i my view is so i've come from the background where i've got the, the the business background i understand how businesses work but i'm also interested in the people as well um so i look at the whole thing and, and you know the term work-life balance might easily slot in there but it's more than that it's like well what nice. what um you know, let's make sure you're in a good place, but what would you actually want to do to, that's going to get a, a buzz out of the business kind mm -hmm. of thing and uh, and look at a, a much broader perspective than just um, just 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 making money kind of thing. Um, so, I mean, as an example, I say, look, you know, I don't have kids. I, I work with all sorts of people. I'm not restricted to, to child free people. But um, so there's somebody I work with who um, he was actually his third kid was coming along. Uh, he, he was a graphic designer. And he had a, an okay practice. Um, he never wanted to grow. He never wanted to sort of make the the world world a, have a, a an empire or anything like that. He just wanted a nice steady job doing what he did and enjoyed. But he just couldn't get over a financial threshold. Now he got a new kid coming along. How am I going to pay for the job? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so as a starting point, it was just working on his financial mindset, working on some basic principles, getting him shifted in a, in a, into the right space. So actually, his he started enjoying his work again, got connected to what he enjoyed doing, who he enjoyed working with a lot more, prepared to charge a little bit more. And the work started flowing a lot more effortlessly. He started enjoying what he's doing again. And suddenly he was doubling his income with very little effort, really, just doing what he liked to do anyway. Yeah, um, probably because that passion came through. Yeah, absolutely. And because we, we do the thing we love, but then it's these things, these traps that come in that stop us actually achieving and getting the, the reward of that passion. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just a case of understanding what's blocking us and unlocking it. Yeah. Yeah, when I first started, I always thought it was the destination, like everyone does starting out just about. And then um, with health issues... And then other things happening in life, I realized, no, it's more about the journey and you just never know how long you've got. So life is precious and we're not here to live to work. Work is just supposed to be able to make our life better. Yeah. And money, money is a, a useful tool to open up various things as I said it's part of the you know again that's part of that journey rather than the destination um but you know we should be as you say we we, we don't live to work but the, the more that we can get a, a buzz out of what we're doing and it becomes integrated just to who we are yeah. uh then it becomes part i mean i'm almost at the point where it's, i don't i don't really consider working it's just a natural integration between right. 
well, I have to be doing this today and I'm happy doing that tomorrow. Well, tomorrow I'm on uh, touring around the country on holiday, but it, it's just a blend. You know, there's no real delineation between the two. Um, so the, 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 what I've observed is that there's kind of three key drivers in, in most business people, which end up being the thing that gets us to a certain point, but then becomes the thing that holds us back at the same time, if that makes sense. And essentially, they are um, uh, have more, be more, and uh, be accepted. Mm, so yep. you have one. We can have blends of all three, but you, you see the people who, who are all about have more, must earn more money, must get the next price. You see a lot of these sort of multimillionaire stories, that kind of thing. And they've just got this drive to no matter how much they've got, they need to get more. And underlying it is a fear of losing everything in 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 in, yeah, in most yeah. cases. Um, be more in terms of getting that respect, getting um, people saying how uh, uh, how good you are, the ego, the, that kind of thing. It's like I, I want to, I've, I've got to prove to my dad that I'm uh, I'm a success. That's very Donald Trump bit there. Sorry for Donald Trump fans, but you can see how he is driven to get a pat on the back from his dad, who's no longer around anymore. He'll never get it, but he will never be satisfied because he's never going to meet up to his <laughs> ideal of what he th he thinks his dad ideal is. Um, and then and and within there you get the the trap of perfectionism and uh, um imposter syndrome and all these kind of things because we're measuring our self-worth by the output that we produce mm. rather than actually sitting within ourselves and going actually we're okay <laughs> um and then the third one is being accepted so wanting to become part of and people allowing us in being liked fear of rejection uh, people pleasing, all that kind of stuff in there. So, so the, the, those are the three key, key drives for me that most people will get us to a certain point, but at the same time end up being causing us misery at the same time um, because we never really get satisfied unless we actually turn the the negative um, drive into a positive one, and then you can start moving into purpose because you can start finding out well, what actually is now. I can take that energy and that drive that I've got and build my business around that the positivity that's coming from it so then the more you do the better it becomes and the more you enjoy it oh absolutely so what does leaving a legacy mean to you personally and professionally yeah um legacy is one of those words which you know everyone's kind of got their own definition and um as you say you're asking the question for me so it's valid but there, I, I see a difference between um legacy per se and a meaningful legacy um, I think a legacy is quite simple. Um, you know, uh, I've written several books. They're a legacy. Uh, I've helped change people's lives. They're a legacy. And I don't mean that in a, ooh, you know, I've changed people's lives. I mean, you've changed people's <laughs> lives by doing what you do. We all we all had an impact on the people mm -hmm. around us in terms of the service that we provide. And that has an impact on that person. <laughs> they've paid you for what you've done. Hopefully they've got some benefit out of it. They're in a better place. You've changed the world by what you've done. So we can create some form of legacy just by doing what we do. Mm -hmm. um, but for it to be meaningful, that moves into another dimension for me. And that's, as I say, when I get sort of converted into that that sense of purpose, which is is when the things align, when we know the, the, the thing out there that um, becomes a focal point for the, the change we want to make. But it comes because it's so connected to us inside as well. That's we get that resonating factor between I'm helping them. It means something to me. Boom, 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 boom. And then if you make turning that into something substantial and long term that lives beyond you, then you're into the, the uh, direction of a, a meaningful legacy. Um, so 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 that that's the the the. the um, the differentiation, differentiation uh, between the two for me, and from um, my background, you know, I, I was in into the sort of space where I was generally helping business owners, those that were in difficulty, those who were doing okay, having some good results, and you know, I remember having a number of coaching sessions with various my own coaches and people I work with, and they would say, "Well, you know, what do you want? What do you want?" That old question, "What do you want?" And you go, "Ah, I don't know. <laughs> just want to help people. I like helping people." Well, okay. Well, if you do more of it, what can you do? Oh, yeah. help more people. Hey, <laughs> it, it, it's all very well and good, but it's all vague and you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean anything. And I remember being in a in a coaching session, and and when it sort of 
realizing in my head that's like okay i can be here and i can influence a number of different people and make changes and that's gonna that's gonna be there but as soon as i stop my influence stops i mean they'll the ripple effect will be there but essentially what i'm doing is a job i i, I work until i stop working and then my impact stop and and then that's where it came up for me it's like <sighs> Yeah, I think there's something more I need to do, and that's where legacy starts coming in. What, what can, what can I do that's important that me, that I feel is important that I know will actually keep rolling, mm-hmm. that will go beyond just just the, the the time that I'm on this earth, but will actually keep shifting and moving forward. And that, for me, is what a meaningful legacy is for, for myself, and well, in my definition of it. Yeah. Um writing books and the impact we leave on others is just a small part of that yeah they uh they're, they're part of it they, they they all help but um um yeah making the real change that's that's uh that's the key thing okay. so what strategies or actions have you taken to make sure that your business will outlast your involvement and continue to thrive uh well it's still a work in progress uh it's a journey as uh as yeah. you say and um and just to sort of outline it so my my personal mission is to change the way that success is measured in business because mm-hmm. you know you heard the story and what i've talked about is that essentially at the end of the day even though we all know that there's more in life that's important you look at any sort of uh, measurement system any sort of the FTSE index or stock markets or whatever it is it's how much money you make essentially uh it is what counts you read the newspapers it's like okay th- they might change the wording and they'll look at an actor or, or whatever it might be and say oh they're very famous but you're assuming they make money at the same time that's the only word. and with such a narrow simple uh, individual measure yes it's it's simple to do but that's that that's the problem that all these sort of um, problems arise when that's what everyone's focusing on. So we, we need to change it. So how the hell do you do that? And what do you change it to? And therein lies the question. So ultimately, your intention is to create a community of people who are all on the same wavelength, talking about the same sort of thing. Um, and and together, we will start creating different measures within us. And I've got ideas as to where that's going and what those measures might be and that kind of thing, the early days. Um, I've got a very, fairly clear vision of what I want to create in terms of that community. Um, I've got ideas in terms of the uh, who's going to be involved and, and so on and so forth. Um, and actually, I'm, uh, I've got a, a, the step one of it is to create uh, essentially a marketing company is what I want to create, but which is going to be able to remove the financial pressure from people coming into the community. So if it's like... Because when, even though it's not about the money, the, 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 it, there is that point where if you're not earning enough, if you're not doing enough, then that's always in your mind. That's always that pressure. And it's really hard to get into these deeper levels when all you're worrying about is where the bills are. So what can we do to actually get rid of that <laughs> or at least temper it or get to a point where everyone's earning enough so that they're not in panic mode? Then the brain can start getting creative and start getting everything else right and everything in the right place. Mm-hmm. So bit abstract i can go into detail if you want of what my vision is but that's a rough idea of creating the roadmap of what i'm trying to achieve and the uh the, the steps of, of what's included <laughs> which kind of leads us into so how do you envision your business to impact the community and the industry for the long term and like more steps that you've taken to achieve this vision so far yeah and one of the critical things that's part of it. So when I talk about purpose and talk uh, and people start having a vision of what you're trying to achieve, you know, when we're talking about legacy, it goes beyond us. So it's very important that we're trying to achieve something that we know we're not going to achieve. Which is kind of obvious when we're talking about legacy, but not not obvious when we're talking about what we're trying to achieve. You know, what do you want? What do you want to do? What's the goal? Um, but, we're trying to do something bigger than that. So we're trying to do, do something that be, beyond what um, what we can do ourselves. So it's, it, it reduces the pressure because you can let go of, um, oh, I didn't, you know, you're not going to be on, the, on your deathbed going, oh, I didn't achieve what I wanted to achieve because you've already written it off. <laughs> you knew um, you didn't need to. Um, the other thing is that 
and I was trying to find the stat before the um, before I came, but I can't actually find it. But there's a lot of evidence to show that in a populace, in a community, in a in a society, the percentage of people all believing or following a certain thing um, to switch it and change it, the percentage required to move think about that new way is a lot lower than we would imagine. It's something like somewhere between seven and ten percent. If you get that percentage of the population all talking about the same thing, it's enough just to create a tip because you've got enough um, people who don't care and enough people that aren't really that aren't really sort of invested in it that that's enough weight. So you don't need to get that many people in the scheme of things. When you start looking at the numbers, it's okay. The absolute quantum might be a bit scary if you just looked at it in and of itself, but as percentage wise, it's actually quite small. Um, so. Uh, so that's it's a, this is what I mean by um, getting it get, getting the ball rolling is the key thing yeah. and having yeah. the right people in place to to um, make sure that that um, that keeps going. Uh, and so in terms of what I would how I would see it impacting the the, the community and the industry, uh, I mean at, on a big level, and I know there's a lot of people in this space, it's not just me, but, you know, if, if you think about the decisions that big companies make, pharmaceutical companies, uh, they will make a decision based on profit, not on what's good for people. Um, we're having a big issue in the UK at the moment where all the water companies, uh, to save money, have taken all the untreated sewage and just pumping it into the rivers. Mmm, great, eh? <laughs> uh, and uh, and that's because it, because, again... The money is the prime driver. That's the decision maker and everything else suffers. The all the environment issue, the issues that are going on there. Again, money comes first. All the other factors become second. So at a big level, these are sort of decisions where a different uh, decision will be made if we get this right. At the smaller level, the you's and the me's of the world and the people who's working for themselves just makes for a happier life. <laughs> <laughs> you know it, 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 it it's about being a bit more relaxed not so stressed not so oh, need to be doing this need to be doing that but actually just doing what we enjoy seeing the difference that we can make uh and, and with, which sends out the positive vibe so if you're getting more and more people in a more positive situation we know that in the in the world as a whole that's going to have a huge ripple effect and uh and the um uh, an impact which can't be sort of uh, measured in advance, but a, a, a wave of goodwill, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, I think that. that's a big advantage to be in a smaller business mm. and not some big corporate conglomerate. Is that we're able to shift and adapt quicker. Absolutely. And although, yes, money is we got to make money. That's all there is to it. But we're able to focus more on the people and the actual environment of what we actually care about. And money's the tool to be able to do more of that. Yeah, because I think most people who uh, run their own business are, are yes, they're doing the thing they enjoy, but they get a buzz out of helping people. Mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's what we want to do. We want to help people. And we, we enjoy seeing people being in a better place. Um, now we can fall into that trap of wanting to help people so much that we say, ah, oh, I won't charge you on this one or <laughs> whatever it might be. And then we end up suffering. Yeah. Uh, so again, you've got to sort of be, uh, be playing at an, an equal level. I do what I do and I, you benefit and I benefit as well. And it's a win win. That's what mm -hmm. we're looking for. There's nothing wrong with a win win, but that's the, yeah, you're absolutely right. The beauty of a small business owner. It's like you, you want to do something, you make a decision, you do it. <laughs> yes, exactly idea in the morning and it's it's start playing out in the afternoon uh, <laughs> but yeah so are there any specific causes or philanthropic endeavors that you're passionate about and that just, you believe that's going to contribute more to part of your lasting legacy yeah because i mean in my mind it's more about changing the circumstances so that such things don't need to exist mm -hmm if that makes sense. Now, I do um, uh, have regular contributions to local food banks. 
and the percentage of everything I earn, everybody that downloads this episode of my podcast, everyone that we I catch up and have a one-to-one with that's sort of not part of a, a paid program. I, I have this sort of structure so that every time something good happens to me, then I give something to a local food bank. But I know that that's not a solution. That's that's something that uh, resonates in terms of a you know, karmic cycle or whatever you want to route you want to go down. Uh, but it's it'll be mo- it's more effective if we can change the fundamental societies and systems mm-hmm. that are broken and are allowing such things to be needed. <laughs> right. if that makes sense. So so uh, yeah. So I do have some things that I, I I do contribute to, but I'm more interested in changing the fundamentals. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, because no matter how much we try to, we can help. Like if the underlying root factor isn't fixed, I mean, it's just going to continue. Yeah. Like yeah. homelessness and... around here is pretty bad kind of thing. So, yeah. And and, and and that that's taps into a lot of, you know, there's a lot of solutions out there that are, are sticking plaster approaches. Um, and uh <laughs> treading into your space but the productivity type thing you'll see a lot of things come on my time saving course and then they get some loads of tools on how to save time Mm -hmm. but they haven't actually changed the fundamental principles beneath the person themselves the situation that they're in to 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 make long-lasting change it's just right i've got a good tool now and then oh three months later it's not working because they're not in the right space um so it's 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 get the people in the right space first and then those tools work so much more effectively yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because today I actually put a, a, I did a graphic on like before time management can even be a thing, you have to have these fundamental foundational things before it can even work. So it's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> well, because you see so many, oh, you know, have you read this book? Have you done this? Have you tried, tried this technique? And they're all great. There's nothing wrong with any of them, but they're just sticking a, a a plaster on something without the fundamental changes and and you know marketing is tailored at those instant responses the the like we you know mentioned at the beginning that like come on my course and be earn six figures and you know tapping straight into that fundamental be uh have more and then uh and time and stress you know it's 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 they they those things at the top of the things we are emotionally connected to and so they resonate within us and we end up end up buying things for, to, to solve the surface issue without stepping back to actually think well what's really going to make a fundamental change yeah i think a lot of people are also afraid to really look at themselves and admit to themselves like what's really going on you got to take that step back and realization before you can make any steps forward. Yeah. 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 That's it. And, um, you know, a, you know, a, a true journey of business is actually the journey of self. Mm-hmm. Um, and it comes to us all at some point, some, some sooner than others and some later than others. But as you say, if we, if we never actually self analyze, never go in deep, then, we're always going to have an element of constraint or restriction in terms of how far forward we can go. Oh yeah. Um, cool. But as you say, not necessarily that easy, not that comfortable. And society is determined that we don't <laughs> talk about these things, that we don't go there and so on and so forth. So there's a trap within a trap. <laughs> yeah. Which is why I am all about going against the grain. So it's more these fun. things need to be talking about. <laughs> it's, well, I mean, one of the one of the other principles that I didn't mention before, but um, it, it, when you actually look at everything, and you know, this needs to be this way, this needs to be that way. Actually, the reality is there are no truths. Uh, so, if there's any statement that says you have to do this, you must do this, you should do this, those are only true within a certain context. Mm-hmm. And what we often do is drop the context. So it ends up being, oh, I've got to do this. Why have you got to do it? I've got to do this in order to, okay, well, do you actually need to do that thing? You know, in order to do what? Is that How important is that to you? Oh, that's really important. Okay, great. Now you have to do it. So that's fine. But you have chosen to do the thing that's important. Right. So I'm not, I don't have to do anything. I'm choosing to do it, even the have to. So do you have to have kids? No. <laughs> right. That's the obvious one. That's why we're talking. Um, but any 
any aspect of life do i have to go to school and go to university and get a degree and then go and get a career i thought i did no i don't have to um is there use in it well it might be but you know what i'm going to look at the options and choose which one i want to do and whether i want to do it or not and instantly you're a much more relaxed and powerful place if you're choosing rather than being forced right so what lessons or experiences from your own upbringing or family background has influenced your approach to building a legacy outside of family yeah it's, it's um interesting question because it's sort of Again, like I alluded before, it's not something that I was probably conscious of as going through. I think it's more on a reflection and trying to work out, try and pick some pieces back in hindsight. Um, I mean, I uh, we were speaking before we we jumped on this call, but our experiences of being child free are very different because of our, our genders, our geography, and and all the rest of it. Uh, and so whilst I've had the, the, the people sort of um, not understanding, it's not I've been overly aggressive. Um, but I think the only real guilt trip, if you want, is probably, and this is probably more for the more male focused side of it than the, than the female side, because in the main, the women get much more pressure on, on having children than the men do. The issue for blokes is carrying on the bloodline carrying on the family name those are the two guilt whatever's and uh, the main two things people think of probably when it comes to legacy yeah uh, and, but it's more uh, than that. we're we're again we're indoctrinated it through all the history things particularly again in england and uk with the kings and queens and all the bloodlines and all that and you've got to have a son and all this sort of stuff you know it's sort of 60 percent of our uh dramas 90 percent of our historical dramas are all about that and the whole of game of thrones is all about that and <laughs> you know it's, it's the way it is um and i kind of had to come to terms with the you know that my dad's desire for the miller name to continue and, and all that kind of stuff that wasn't my problem that was that was what he wanted um when and and I think the probably the first shift in that where I really came clear with when 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 I got married my wife or my wife when I got married uh, she kept her name there was a discussion around it the norm is that the woman takes the man's name and there's you all kind of know the archaic sort of uh, dodgy reasons behind that but bottom line was well two two bottom lines actually <laughs> two things um her name's much more nicer than mine uh, her surname is domini d o m i n e y uh, there aren't many dominies in the world it's 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 this nice name miller <laughs> it's quite dull i'm sorry uh, there's plenty of them around there's um so she's her first name sharon there's loads of sharon millers there's loads of andrew millers not that exciting so she's got a more interesting name anyway so it would be cruel to get rid of that um also she was very lazy and didn't want to change all the passports and fill in the forms and oh my gosh that takes so much time <laughs> i don't blame her at all for that one it's like we're going on honeymoon and i haven't had to change the name in my passport so i can still just go straight through customs and <laughs> that's what control um so anyway so at that point it was that kind of oh yeah oh, the name's not well, we're not gonna have children anyway but even so that, that that's one reason the name um so um and i'm conscious that with her on her side she's she's got two sisters uh and um one of them is in a same-sex marriage they've decided not to adopt um sharon and i not having children or adopting or anything like that and the third sister is married and does have children but of course has taken the husband's name so that name is disappearing anyway uh from my side my brother has uh, adopted three children um one of them's a boy so the name might continue through there so okay parents are technically happy but the bloodline's gone mm -hmm. they're adopted so the bloodline's not there and you suddenly realize you start thinking about it and go actually this is this is ludicrous it's just ridiculous uh and we get so obsessed with uh oh you know this must continue that must be continue but it's all it's all rubbish when you actually break it all down <laughs> so those sort of thoughts and processes are probably that sort of sort of that open me, me up in terms of stepping away from that kind of legacy and i sort of you know um 
that, 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 that allow me to step into a different space. And when you're in a different space, your brain can go in different areas. And I alluded earlier on in terms of my own journey and trying to connect legacy. And that's probably was able to open up because the mind had shifted into away from a few more have to, must do, should do's. Mm -hmm. I wonder if, if more people realize having kids is a choice, then maybe they would be more willing to think about legacy differently too. Yeah. And I saw a post Alex Hormozy put on about, um, if you know him, but he's, he's mm -hmm. a lot of um, huge, well, they guy, lots of connections. And he was saying legacy is not about passing your wealth down to children. I thought, Oh, big tick. Um, it's about educating them. It's like, okay, you still got kids in that message, message though, haven't you? But it's not about the legacy. And actually I've I realized this, that, um, uh, uh, and this is something that will never happen in terms of being able to do it and never will never be accepted and will, will, will be just get cheated around anyway. But in principle, the concept of um uh oh gosh what's the word um, inheritance mm -hmm. if you got rid of inheritance suddenly the world transforms within a few years because all the problems that arise is somebody who accumulates all the money holds on to themselves and then gives it to their oldest son or whatever the process they're running with and it's definitely in this country, and I imagine it's the same in America. You know, this, the 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 wealth stays in the same place all the time, and you get the likes of Donald Trump who just inherits several billion and then fritter some of it away or turn it or whatever. And you get the people who have nothing, having uh, making it really difficult for them to uh, move 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 upwards. You got rid of of um, inheritance, then everything would change. Now, as I say. It'll never happen. <laughs> and even suggesting it when certain parts of uh, of uh, fairish countries would be run out for being a communist and all the rest of it. So, but um, but if you just actually think about how ridiculous inheritance is, you go back to um, you know when we lived in mud huts and that kind of thing. You might pass on a a, a, a tool that you're a big fan of to to whoever took over your your trade or whatever, but that wouldn't last forever anyway. But the concept of passing a house on or passing a dwelling over the concept of ownership is totally human um which normally means totally abstract and made up <laughs> oh yeah um, especially when parents want to want their kids to inherit like their all their stuff yeah when like pretty much everyone i've talked to doesn't want any most if not any of it <laughs> so it's like it's like what's the point <laughs> just declutter it get rid of it yeah. give it Here's to someone who will actually use it and appreciate it yeah it's like oh oh I've got some sad news your auntie so-and-so died but she's left you this china tea set hooray it was very important to her Right. Okay. I've never seen it before, and I don't drink tea out of China tea sets. But thank you. Yeah. <laughs> there has there is meaning attached to the person, the giver, and you can be grateful for any gift you receive. Right. But no actual connection to it, is there? Yeah. But once they're gone, they won't matter. So it's whatever. <laughs> um, so how do you plan to pass on more of your business knowledge outside of books? and working with clients to future generations well I, I, it's an extension of what we talked before if we get the community right so that everyone's on the same page and bring uh i've already mapped out the board that i want and the different roles that are required to, to see it going and innovating and keep moving um and i'll have trainings of my own which will form part of that then it's through that that and as you say the books is, is part of that as well but it's, it's it's through that snowball of a of a community that's the uh that's the intention <laughs> all right <laughs> um share any challenges or obstacles that you've encountered being a child-free business owner in terms of legacy planning and how you overcome them uh, the, the biggest challenge has always been trying to work out what the thing is, mm -hmm. um, uh, as alluded to before. And, uh, you know, for me, 
it took a lot of it was various stages and um it, 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 again it was, it was alluded to that that inward reflection which can be a quite uncomfortable and quite challenging so um the initial phase for me was uh, there was a period when I was um collaborating with another coach and we we're doing stuff together and then we uh rightly and very amicably went our separate ways because we realized we were going in different directions but it meant that I'd been in the wrong space for a few years I hadn't really just like what am I doing so I had to go through that process of right who are the people I really like working with and why and what do they look like and why is that resonating from that, that from me and 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 actually part of that was was realizing that why they were coming to me was as we've touched on before he's not about making the money it's about enjoying what they do more and that's where the initial concept came from so i got to the point where i was logically i'd worked it out but then i'm a logical person by background maths accountants you know <laughs> i'm very head based and um but i wasn't connected to it it's like yeah that makes i write it on paper yeah that looks good yeah, yeah. but if, when i said it when i saw it i didn't feel like it was this sort of buzz mm. and um so i had to go on a journey to try and dig deep and try and work out well what is blocking me from connecting to that if it's the right thing or is it not the right thing and sort of uh go through that and that took quite a while to uncover a lot of stuff but ultimately got to a a point where um i got it, it was into this what it was an intensive I was at and there was this particular session that I was going into where I knew it was going to go quite deep and emotional and that kind of thing. And I, and I would essentially set myself the intention to cry because I'm not, uh, historically, I'm not a crier. Um, I'm obviously I'm a bloke, so that always helps. Uh, but um, uh, again, working in the world realms of insolvency, really useful, not getting too emotionally attached to the people around. I wasn't callous. I was always, kind of people but I, I had created this emotional wall mm. around me over decades and decades that could just bounce everything off and I wouldn't get affected by it and uh so I realized that that's what had to come down um now it's interesting because the child free element you put in the question and I always wonder this you know we can never know what it would be like on the other side of the fence and they can't know what it's like on our side of the fence so I can imagine and I'm only imagining only that uh that people who have children that wall might come down a little quicker and sooner because of the emotional connection they have towards their uh their child I'm just putting out there as a hypothesis. I'm not <laughs> not hooked on it. But so one of the challenges of not being uh, of being child free is that 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 opportunity certainly didn't happen. Uh, mostly attached to my cats, I guess. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that on a certain level. Uh, but yes, yeah, so you know, forty years of, of of solid building of this rule didn't break down easily. So yeah, going to this session, make myself cry, and and um as it went through it this memory came up i hadn't come up before of something that occurred to me when i was like four years old nothing traumatic it was traumatic for me but nothing in in the real terms it was my brother played a joke on me and everybody laughed um but as i looked around and seeing my entire family laughing at me it suddenly threw up all these feelings of betrayal and um and not trusting people and it's like well you know when your mum's laughing at you you can't get what you want all that kind of thing so um so I ended up not trusting people and not showing my real emotions because you just get laughed at um and fear of rejection that was my thing uh so that that started at an early age and everything then built on top of that but so it took a lot of working out what to do what the thing was and then unlocking it in order for that wall to come down and then boom getting connected to the real me and then all the logic stuff that had stayed at the head level then boom sucking stuck sunk or connected through to the heart and through to the rest of the body and i i literally had a vision <laughs> <laughs> i'm not uh it not i don't mean mean it in a in a in a religious sense because i'm totally conscious of how the brain makes patterns and sees patterns and all the rest of it from images it comes up with but i had a waking vision of of, of of me breaking this these ropes and chains of nets of the people that were around and walking to to the land of enjoyment and helping people out and putting them and all this sort of stuff going on and yeah tears flooding down my eyes at the same time and all the rest of it so um 
so th that feeling when so I, I talk about you know you know I said we think with a head. We also know we we, we now know that it's, our brain's not just in our head. We we feel with our heart and we think with our gut at the same as well. So but all these three things are also part of our decision making process. So um, I talk about when people talk about the head, the heart, and the the gut. When I change it around a little bit, I say it's my brain, it's my tummy, and it's my soul. Brain, tummy, soul. By their initials B T S. Those are your bits. <laughs> Okay. So when when I everything came down, I got connected. That emotion flooded through. It flooded through my all, that lightning bolt through the entire body, and that's when my bits tingle. Makes sense. And that's why I talk about my strap line. And I want you to enjoy your business so much it makes your bits tingle because you're fully <laughs> aligned with what who you are, where you're going, what you're doing, and knowing that the difference that you make a helps the people you're looking to help. And B, it sits resonates with you. Which we talked about at the start. Yeah, that alignment is one of the foundations to everything else. But it needs to be it need uh, you you have to want to go on to that journey and want to go through some effort in terms of breaking it down. Um, and the flip side, I was talking about, you might be able to get connected to the emotions sooner if you have children. But the question of purpose and who I really am, that's where the the advantage of being child free comes as opposed to having children, because the child and children become a distraction, if you like, it becomes the focal point. And it's quite common for those kids to grow up and leave. And then you have people in their 50s, you know, late 40s, 50s, or even older, suddenly going, What's the meaning of my life? <laughs> mm -hmm the empty nester syndrome and for them that's the, the journey starts there we can start earlier right exactly so it's always a long journey but we can start earlier you get there quicker <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you give other child free entrepreneurs who are interested in leaving a lasting impact on the world whether through their business or their life uh so the first thing is to make sure you're in a good place first. So the concept of purpose and legacy and that kind of thing, whilst, whilst they, it can be really useful when you've, when you're, um, you know, something really horrible happens and, 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 and through that trauma purpose comes, that can be the driver that gets you back up. But I wouldn't advocate that as a go-to route, if that makes sense. So the people that, um, uh, lost their businesses that I used to work with a lot of them rediscovered their purpose through that process but um, it's not what I would call, consider a sound business plan to make sure you go bust so if we can avoid that the first thing is to make sure you're in a good place first so that you've got the time and the freedom to choose to look for these things without the pressure as I alluded to earlier on but but this bedrock that it's based on, it's not just financial. We also need to make sure that we ourselves are in a good place. That mental health issue is, is we, we, when I first went into the world of entrepreneurship, I found it stressful. It was like that, that moment when you suddenly realize there's nowhere to hide and suddenly it's triggering all these things and all that. So you've, got, you've got to make sure that those things are sorted so that you can get to a point where it's like, okay. Not only do I feel comfortable that I'm not rich, but you know, I'm all right on the money front, but also I can pretty much deal with whatever comes my way. I feel good, I'm okay, I'm solid. Um, so you need to make sure you're in the right place first. Then, if you want, um, it's about exploring. Uh so it's 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 about um and then choosing to say, well, what is the thing that really, really matters to me? And that is Again, it's a two-way inquiry of looking within self and looking out outside self to create that resonance. Mm -hmm. And when you get clearer on what that is, and it, and again, you've got to take the pressure off yourself. <laughs> Don't think I have to find it in the next six months. It's like he's in. Um, and you know, you, you, sometimes finding that answer is by going on the journey when you don't know the answer. You kind of need to fail and do things wrong and see what you do like and what you don't like. Mm -hmm. Um so but just be open to it and just explore and then when you as things get clearer then you can build your business around that uh, and from there you can start building the legacy so where can we find you online and what is one resource you'd like to share with us today 
Okay. Um, so a couple of my main website is businessenjoyment.com and um that's a lot of my general stuff uh i'm on linkedin as well uh, there's a lot of uh so my business enjoyment is much broader so it doesn't go into the child free specific stuff um in the main but it shows some of the other stuff i'm doing linkedin a bit more on that front uh but i um i do have a copy of the uh book i've written recently which is called unleash your legacy uh how child free entrepreneurs leave their mark in the world and um, I will I will give you a link that you can send out to your listeners and viewers and, and uh, just free for them to download and have a look, give a bit more information. Obviously, that means I will get their email address <laughs> and they might get a couple of emails from me. But I'm planning on doing some some workshops and some masterclasses and things with some of which are free, some of which are low cost. It's up to them. So I'm not a spammer. I'm just going to like attack people. I'm a sort of like, look, this is what stuff's available. Um, if you're interested, come along. And if you're not. That's also also equally good. Relax out of the way because I do not want to be put to be to put under any pressure that they have to do anything. It's all about choice. Yes, that's the underlying theme here: choice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, we can all move right, into I'll, Yeah, I'll leave all of Andrew's links down in the description for you to check them out, and I'll put all his social links besides of what he's already mentioned today. Uh, thank you, Andrew, so much for being here. Um, what is your biggest takeaway from this conversation? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to find more interviews with other child-free entrepreneurs, check them out here. So thank you. Thank you very much.